This doesn't show any any source of anything. All right, 4K7. So we're actually going to need one. Now that looks different. Are these different 4K7? That one looks bigger than that one. Yes, the smaller ones are just normal ones that would be much smaller. These are what's called power resistors, All right. and they're two watt. Um, normally, a lot of these other resistors can be like about a half a watt or even a quarter of a watt. I tend to just choose half watt because they're, I like them a little bit more uh, larger size. So, what are you measuring? I don't know. I want to measure something. Resistance. Resistance. It's a resistor, so ohms. Is that ohms? Yes, that's ohms right there. All right. So Look, generally my trick to this. Give me a break. Yeah, my trick to this has generally been to just hold these together like this in your okay. one hand. Okay, or just let me. And then you can just drop the other thing, thing with the other hand right across the thing. All right. Efficiency and all. 4.68. 6.8, which is very close to 4.7. Right. So. Do any of these matter if they touch the board or not? Is there anything that When we fill those with touch? solder, no, the only ones that won't, you won't want to use the touch are generally ones kind of like this, but again, that's part of what I was saying is this one, you would need a single 10 watt resistor for this. We've got three. So this has 30 watts of capacity, so it'll be at one third its capacity. So that will be way over overpowered and that's fine. Yeah. All right, so next we need a 12K and it's another power resistor. So I've got 12K two watts right there. So how do I know the difference between a power resistor and these other resistors? Just the size of them? There's two ways to know. One is you just need to look at the schematic and it will tell you which one it is. But also, in generally in these layout designs, they make them look bigger and, and big white versus the smaller ones will be more like brown or blue depending on which type they are. Um, but also, generally stuff dealing with the high voltage or the power rail will be these big higher watt ones. So you see there's two ones there. If you follow that red rail over, it comes up connects to here over and then there's another big one there. Now these are just the smaller ones going to the actual tube, but the, they're what's called power dropper resistors or power, you don't want to pull it out and I'll tell oh, you why. Okay. There's glue on the end that won't solder well. I don't want to pull so it out. So if you ever have these, you just want to snip it at the end here and snip it the other end there or else you'll end up leaving glue on them and that makes them harder to solder in those areas where there's the glue left over. Mm -hmm. So just that's, snip off the very end. That's common, isn't it? What? Not wanting to pull out. <laughs> Oh my la la. You don't really need to put it back in there if you don't want to. I want to. All right. <laughs> what? You're such a dork. All right. It's my job to be dorky. We're going to test. This is supposed to say 12K. I'm sorry that I'm not showing this on the screen. Here we go. 11.85. Close enough. That's within tolerance. So these are... I think these are 5% tolerance or 10% tolerance, I can't remember, so that means that they can be that far so off. So if gold is that way, we want the gold to still be that way. Yeah. And that gold band is what tells you what tolerance level is. I don't remember off the top of my head, I don't have a chart, but I think it's either 5 or 10% tolerance. This. Sometimes they'll write them as 4.7, other times they just put 4K7 to mean 4.7K. The K becomes kind of like the dot, because sometimes it's hard to read that little dot mm -hmm. on a sheet like this. So, I'm going to get these some scissors. That doesn't look like I need any more of these, so I'm going to get into the habit now of putting shit away as I'm doing it. All right. So I'm not trying to figure out what's what later. All right. Oh yeah, these are a lot smaller. Yep, those okay, are. So and those are. I think I got those are all half watt. You can do I think as low as a quarter watt quite often in amps, and it won't be a problem. But so we've got the gold this way, so I'm going to turn it as in 
as if it was going up. That should be fine. You can kind of also imagine in your head generally that this is the top side because this is where positive is and the high plus rail, so that could right. be the top. But so now, to is it still testing ohms? Yep. Yeah, all resistors test, you check ohms. Four points. Whoa. You just have to keep a consistent pressure on it. Okay. So I don't like this one because I have it bent too far up that way. Well, you've only bent it once. You can probably do it again if you want. If for some reason you feel like you've ruined it, it only costs a few cents for a resistor. We can replace it all. Be careful, you just dumped out the other resistor there. possibly had some very specific stuff, but um, we will have to deal with that with a 32 case. We're one case short on that one, but... Um, Should we skip it and go back to that one? Well, we have to see if we can order 32 k We can. We can, or we can just drop one in that's 32 k for now and see if we can find a 32 k later, but I think some of those very specific values are the more expensive resistors because they're not in the common band. Right. Well, we're going to skip that one for a moment. All right. But I think we have K. two 33 k Oh, that's a different color. That might be something different. Over here. Well, those are 32K as well. But I don't, yeah, that's really weird. Okay. Well, we will see if we can find some 33K. All right. All right. So now we've got this little doohickey banicky. Is that this doohickey mm -hmm. banicky? That is a potentiometer. It's a 10K. Potentiometer is another name for a variable resistor. Potentiometer variable resistor. And if you want to see what the value of it is, you just connect this to the two. Oh, I forgot to test that one. Let's test it then. All right. Should be 50, yep, 55.4. All right. So if you touch the two back leads, this should be the um, two ends of it, and that should give you what the value is. Here, I'll hold it if you want to touch it. So you just kind of go like this and like that, and we get 9.97K. Now this is just where it's at in the middle. Should If you add the two up, it should come to the total. So that's 39 point something. And if I switch these two, that's 10 something. So, so almost all of it was the, the, between those two and these two was almost nothing. It was like nine ohms or something. It was a very small amount. That's how a variable resistor works is it effectively has a, a path that the, what's called the wiper can roll around and adjust the distance. It divides the resistor kind of in half, or not in half, Jeez. but in parts. So you're right, if I bend this out a little yeah. bit? I bent it in a teeny bit just to make it tighter, but we can put it in first and then kind of reach underneath and pinch it together to make it tighter. There you go. You don't need to push it down too far because we have to get soldering iron and solder inside of there too. But And we also have to jumper if you look. We have to put jumpers underneath in these oh. as well. But, um, yeah. Okay. Um, so now we've got a 0.1 microfarad 600 volt. Now, one of the things you can look at though and see right there is there's two 220k resistors. Mm -hmm. They're shown on top just for visibility, mm -hmm. but they're small and they're you're not going to want them sticking up over the top of this big huge capacitor. Oh, no, so you want to put those underneath first. You really. are correct. All right, so 220K. Oh, I just realized something. What? I have not taken the time to look at these on my capacitor, or on my tester to see which side is the outer foil. Okay. So we will need to hold off, stop recording for a Stop. minute. Stop!